Hey there YouTube, welcome to the ACH Automotive channel. Today we're gonna change out the fuel level sensor in our 2017 Ram 1500. First thing we're gonna do, this is Fuse F70. We're gonna pull it, it's a 30 amp fuse. This is for the fuel pump motor. And we'll just pull it like that. We'll leave it right there for the moment because we're gonna need it back in a second. And we've also got to remove the fuel cap and basically crank the engine until it doesn't start anymore. Um, so let's do this. This is kind of similar to what we had to do on the Mazda. Open this guy up here. And I gotta find my key, which is apparently not in, oh, there it is. So we should put the key in. It should die. There we go. Okay, should be good enough there. Now what I'm gonna do is I am gonna jack this corner up. I've already got the lug nuts loose. We're gonna put a hose on the top of the pump. We'll put the fuse back in and we'll use our alpha OBD program. You can also use uh, you know any of your scan tools that will allow you to activate your fuel pump. This is how TechNet calls for draining the tank if it's full. Uh, if the pump is still functioning, because this tank is probably three quarters full right now. So we're gonna have to drain it to pull it. Once we get it drained, then we can pull the tank and change the fuel pump assembly. Got my lights set up. Uh, if, you're, if you didn't watch the last video, I already pulled the wheel well liner. So we've got that out of the way. Um, I left it off because I knew I was gonna be working on it. What we need to do is Get this tab here. Getting that top line off the top of the fuel pump module is uh, very tricky. Um, <clears throat> if you're not careful, these tabs are just, I mean, I barely put any pressure on it. I mean, the truck's three years old with 75,000 miles on it. It just kind of snapped a little bit. Uh, I'll have to get another one. Basically what I want to show you, I can't show you with the, I can't get the camera in there. You pop this clip out like this so it looks like that um, there's a tab on both sides which is what kind of got me because a lot of the chrysler um, stuff at least like on the dart and whatnot there's just one sided um, and then you have this piece underneath now on this one it's white on the on the top of the fuel pump it's black so you it blends right in i don't know why well, at least it looks like it's black from where i can see it um, you have to push on it real hard and it will, there's a, another set of fingers in there uh, that grip on the back of it. And trying to do it one handed is not fun. This is probably where a lift would come in real handy. But you can see that I've got it disconnected now. So we're gonna throw our hose on there and see if we can get this to drain. We are using Alpha OBD here on our tablet, our Surface Pro. Um, I don't have an Autel or anything quite yet. You can see how I've got it hooked up. Uh, I should have had a longer piece of hose. I wasn't really thinking about it. This is how the TechNet article says to drain it as long as your pump is working. And since this tank is almost full, we have got our work cut out for us. I've taken my tablet, I've got it connected here. We are gonna go to Active Diagnostics in uh, Alpha OBD. And we're gonna find the fuel pump relay and we're gonna activate it. And we're just gonna continue to do that until we have a full tank, or until we've drained the tank. So it runs it for about 10 seconds. You could also probably jump the relay up front, uh, but this is, like I said, this is the procedure that's in TechNet that I found. I'm gonna go ahead and finish draining this tank, and then we'll, uh, we'll come back here shortly, because this is gonna take me a little while. We got our tank drained. Um, I'm gonna take our hose off the top of the pump. I'm gonna put the wheel back on and we are gonna put the ram up on our metal ramps. That'll give me a little bit more room to get myself under there to do the rest of the disconnection. Um, actually, before we do that, I'm gonna disconnect these lines here so that once I get it up in the air, uh, I don't have to uh, take this off again. This is our filler tube and vent tube. Um, I'm gonna disconnect this guy, we're gonna disconnect this guy and I think the rest of those stay attached to the tank. 
might need to get a little pick to free that. And then again, on this clip here, we pull, pull it out and then I'll push it forward. Oh, it might be already forward because I was playing with it already. And you just push up and then you should be able to slide back with it. There we go. All right, that's off. Okay. Out of the way, I'm gonna disconnect the sensor. That should just come down with the tank. Just wiggle this off, it is going. If it doesn't go, you may need a little like pick to kind of break the seal. There we go. Uh, let's see, oh, they do want you to take the ground wire off. I gotta go disconnect the battery. And let's disconnect our chassis ground here. This is a 10 millimeter bolt. 10 millimeter nut. It's out of the way. That is out of the way. Now, I'm gonna disconnect the EVAP tube here. <coughs> Which I'm not quite sure how we do that. Does that just come out? Oops. All right, there we go. It just twists off. Now, everything up here, I believe, is disconnected. Oops, you know what? We've still gotta take our harness off the pump again and I've got to undo my clamp that I put on to hold our empty our uh, draining hose all right got our truck up on ramps here you can see this is the underside of the tank there's an evap line up here we had to disconnect um, you can see I got two clips in there they push apart this pushes out and it slides apart Croiled our two 16 millimeter bolts or nuts that hold the straps across there. I have the jack just gently placed against the tank and it is a, I need some long extensions to get that back one. Uh, the tank is loose at this point. Uh, so we just want the, we just want the jack there to catch it. Uh, I can muscle it around. I don't believe from what I read that it was too terribly heavy. You don't really need the super long extensions for the front one, but the back one you definitely do. Otherwise you won't clear the drive shaft. There we go. Pull that off by hand now. Like I said, I just got a little bit of pressure on the tank with the jack. You don't want a lot because you do not want the, um, you, it's a plastic tank, you'll, you'll damage it. Now we may have to, you know, we're gonna have to disconnect the fuel pump module too. I'm forgetting about that. That is up top here. There we go. That is disconnected. Need to remember to plug that back in later because that'll be a problem if we don't. I am hoping we don't have to take this tank all the way out and then I can just drop it down a little bit and change what I gotta do. Okay, there we go. All right. There's that strap. We should hopefully be able to lower it down. There we go. This is the tool we're gonna to use to undo the locking ring. It's an OTC 6599. It is what it's called for in the TechNet service bulletin on removing and replacing uh, the fuel pump unit in this truck. So I picked one of those up. It was like 45 bucks off of Amazon. Um, you, additionally, you can, you can uh, just use uh, a hammer and a screwdriver or what have you, but that's not how I wanted to do it because that's not how the service manual calls for it. So this sits on the ring, you put a half inch ratchet on it and you crack it loose. All right, I ended up pulling the tank out of the truck. I was hoping I could do this under the truck. I had a lot of trouble with this OTC tool. This is the tool that the book calls for. Um, I couldn't get it to budge at all. The way that I ended up doing it was old school. Uh, just took a, a hammer and a screwdriver, or hammer and a chisel, tapped it up so that these tabs got into the bigger portion of the lock ring 
and we'll have to let's clean uh we'll blow some of this dirt out some more uh we don't want this getting in the tank but now the unit should spring up there's some springs on it we'll throw the new one in and put it back together and throw it back in the truck uh before we do that i do want to i do want to show you the difference between the good level sensor and the bad level sensor and how they work pop this out you want to be careful of your float there we go and it will have a little fuel in it let's go take this oh uh, yeah the tank's still got probably a quarter of the way full let's go take this over to the workbench before we put this back in uh, the kit that i bought comes with a new gasket we'll want to um we'll want to change that as well clean up the seal and everything make sure everything's nice and tight we are connected to i have my multimeter uh, set to 2000 ohms it is connected to the old unit here or the old uh, fuel sending unit and you can see right now it's reading 52 ohms which is dead full according to specs if you watched my last video what we're looking for is when i move this float is this should this number should be nice and even so there shouldn't like it shouldn't drop to zero at all so when i move it now the gauge works when the tank is full so and just till about like a quarter of a tank somewhere that so you can see i'm starting to move it the resistance should go up as the fuel level goes down so you can see it's starting to go and i've lost it right about there which is about where i lose it on the gauge just off a of full it starts to act up and it doesn't come back at all so now i'm going back up filling the tank there we go you can see it starts to come in and max travel is 52 51 ohm somewhere in that neighborhood so uh this is definitely a bad level sensor 100 percent bad level sensor all right this is our new unit which is actually a little different which i hope is not going to be a problem uh it's supposed to fit this truck let's see if i can get on these wires there we go all right so it's in the full position Let's move this over here a little bit. So the tank is full in this position, 52 ohms. As we start to go down, the resistance should go up and you shouldn't see any dead spots. Now my meter may be in the way here. Well, my clip may be in the way for this to be fully empty yeah so my my alligator clip where I'm picking it up on the uh, where, where I'm picking it up on the level sensor is in the way so I can't go all the way empty but now I go all the way full and you're looking to make sure there's no dropouts no dead spots right through the whole uh, range let me see if I can move this Yeah, and there we go. A thou almost a thousand ohms. I think it's like 990 is full is dead empty. So we have just proved basically that this guy has a bad level sensor, and this guy is obviously brand new and is in good working shape. So uh, we can throw this back in the truck and start putting this back the truck back together. Got a bunch of stuff cleaned up off camera. Got our tank a little emptied, uh, emptied a little more, so it should be a little easier to pick up and put back in the truck. Uh, have our new our, our uh, seal area cleaned up. This is our new gasket. No part number on it, but it came with the uh, the pump. Um, and the pump, this pump is part number six eight zero nine two seven five five AA, and I'll try and put that in the description. So. It's gonna go into the truck like like that. Let's get our seal open and then we'll put the pump in. Brandy new seal. Just sits in there like that. Grab our new pump. And you can see it's a little different compared to the old one. 
Um, oh, you know what? I want to mark this. So we'll put this in like so. And there are springs on it. So we'll have to get it in. Let me go get a marker. Something I do, uh, at least on my own vehicles, is um, I will mark the date and the mileage. Truck has 74.3 on it. So we'll just put 74K and it's 14 June of 20. That helps me remember the next time I take this apart. I hope there's not a next time I have to take this apart, but if there is, uh, it remembers, it reminds me of when, when I change stuff. All right, so slide our ring there. This is where we'll use our tool to lock it in place. If it works this time. There we go. All right, well, this tool sucks. I won't. It just doesn't work. You feel like you're gonna break the... I thought it was gonna help, but it hasn't. So we'll just do it the old fashioned way, which is how I got it off. Almost there. There we go, fully locked into place. Now, now we can put this back in the truck. Just be careful when you do this. This is a plastic tank. If you slip, you will go through it, which is exactly why I bought this tool. Um, but this tool, it says not to use impact. Um, it says not to use impact tools on it, which is probably advisable. Uh, but I, uh, maybe if this was in the truck, and the bed was off and this was pinned it would work better but i couldn't for the life of me get this tool to work so just did it the old-fashioned way with a screwdriver and a hammer so don't waste the 45 bucks on this so all right we've got our tank all cleaned up the new pump unit in and fuel level sensor is in uh, we can go ahead and slide this back into the truck now off camera i did put a little never seize on the studs sticking out from the frame of the truck that the um, that the straps bolt to, uh, just in case it comes apart, oh, you gotta take it apart again. I hope not, this was a pain in the butt job without a lift. Uh, I hope I don't have to do this again because it was just, it, it's doable in the garage on your shop floor with a set of ramps. Uh, maybe if I had another body it would have been much more helpful but I didn't so uh, we are you know I'm doing it solo it's definitely doable but it is a pain in the butt and if you've never done it plan to have most of the day taken up we got our strap hooked up on the other side Let's, don't forget your uh, evap harness over here put that on after there's my bolt There we go. Come on, you brat. Right, you just wanna catch it. There we go, all right. Now the tank is back in place and we can connect things and see what happens. So again, don't forget your EVAP harness over here and your uh, fuel pump module. Tighten up the straps on the tank. We're gonna put all of our connections back here. I don't know if I'll be able to reach the uh, fuel pump hookup. That we may have to do very last after I take the truck off, uh, off the ramps here. Okay, there we go. Let's get our evap harness here so you can see these fingers that spread apart the tank uh, cross strap bolts need to be torqued to 30 foot pounds so i've got that all set um, let's get some fuel in and make sure there are no leaks we can then take it off the take it off the ramps and i'll plug everything back in and see if she fires up
Okay, we got everything buttoned up. I got a little bit of fuel in her. We're gonna work on getting our ramps out of here. Then I'll pull this tire and we'll reconnect the fuel pump and see what happens. Got our wheel off. All of our connectors are back on. Everybody looks good. Grounds back on here. Uh, made sure that's nice and snug. That's a 10 millimeter bolt. Let's go plug our battery in and see what happens. Fuse is back into play. Put our fuse holder there. Let's close our cover. There we go. Reconnect it. We got power, that's good. Oops, if I get the key in, that help. Hey, we have a fuel gauge, that's good. Let's see if she starts. Yeah! That's what I'm talking about right there. Check for any leaks. I don't see any. I would say we look pretty good right there. I got about three quarters of a tank, so it's reading about 1.7 volts. Um, and it's all according to this, it's 66% full. Uh, so it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty close though. Yeah, the needle's not right on three quarter. It's it's like just just below it. So cool. So that was a that was a that was a fun fix. Um, it took longer than I wanted it to. Uh, would have been way easier if I had a lift. Uh, totally doable in the driveway or in your garage, but uh, plan for most of the day, or at least at least half a day, uh, if you haven't done it before. It's nothing really difficult. Uh, basic hand tools to uh, change the pump, and maybe a buddy uh, if you. Uh, you know, if you have one available, uh, that's a that would be a huge help. If I had had another set of hands, uh, that would have that would have helped tremendously. So, not overall a difficult job, just kind of a pain in the butt when you're laying uh, on your back trying to <laughs> trying to do it. So, uh, hopefully you like this video. Hopefully uh, you found it informative. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you want to follow along on social media at ACH Automotive, uh, I try to post pictures and stuff on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. I, I definitely get way more, uh, uh, you know, I post way more on those platforms than YouTube just because it takes a lot of time to put these videos together. So uh, hopefully you liked it. If you did, uh, please subscribe, turn on, hit that bell notification, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.